Next, we're going to rebuild a high-pressure fuel pump for a 2002-2003 T1N Mercedes Sprinter. This one has a brush guard on the front, so we're going to get that out of the way. And although you might be able to get that fuel pump out of there uh, without taking the whole front of the van apart, you're also likely to bloody some knuckles and maybe teach the neighbor's kids across the fence there some words they don't need to know yet. So we're just going to go ahead and take the front of this van apart. The bumper comes off. Radiator gets drained. Turbo lines get disconnected. And then we'll set the radiator out a little bit and the fan can be disconnected and set aside. We won't disconnect the power steering lines or the air conditioner lines. We'll leave all of that attached and just kind of lay it down and off to the side a bit so we've got plenty of room to work. It helps to have a friend come in with a long bar and a little hook on the end to hold on to that water pump pulley while you put an 8 millimeter Allen key in the front of the fan and work that loose. Uh, we had a little bit of trouble with that on this fan, but we finally got it off there. Then I believe it's a E10 socket to take the little bolts off of the low pressure fuel lines on the passenger side of the van there. You got a 14 millimeter open end wrench to take the high pressure line off on the driver's side of the van. This is the high pressure fuel pump as it sits on the engine block. As you can see over here is where the low pressure fuel lines come and go. Oh, high pressure comes out here and the electrical connection is there. 14 millimeter to pull the high pressure line off you'll need to loosen it at both ends so you can swivel it out of the way a simple clip and pull the electrical connections there's a e10 bolt over here that pulls out and then there's a little metal plate that comes off and releases two hoses there's only one here still but there should be two on there maybe it's e11 you've got a bolt on the bottom top left top right and then this We'll wiggle out. When it comes out, don't want to lose this guy here. Without that in there later, your pump won't do a whole lot of good. It won't engage with the, the cams. And once the pump is out, you're going to need a couple of Torx bits. These are T40 on the heads. T30 on these three bolts here. T20 on these three bolts around the electrical connection. Inside the low pressure lines, see there's just a hole in that one. This one has a little uh, retaining clip. Yeah, I didn't have a small enough retaining clip tool, but I did have an old band-aid scissors and a disc sander, so I made my own. See, we can get in there and pull that out. And that should probably be step one of the rebuild because uh, the instruction video that did not have that, make sure you set your parts out in such a way that you know what order they go back in. Lay out some clean paper and shop towels and lay out your parts and start taking things apart here one piece at a time. Uh, by labeling the paper, you can put the pieces down in an order that you can put them back in. Uh, the same orientation that they came out and you want to make sure you mark the pump and the center there the centerpiece that's going to come out mark those so you get everything oriented the same way when you put it back together I start by removing the electrical connection with three T20 Torx bits lay that off to the side little screws try to keep them organized parts from one area stay together on the paper Mark the cam, one, two, and three, so it gets reoriented back in the same place. I marked it close to the bolts. With the T40 bit, taking these big head bolts off, four on each. Had to have a friend counter hold it because they're really tight. A little bit when you take the bolts out, hold down on a little bit so it doesn't spring apart and lay things out very carefully there. The uh, plunge spring has a big O-ring that we're going to replace. Then the valve cage has a little seal underneath it, a little metal ring. Then the over here the head has a plastic washer and a rubber seal underneath it, so we're going to take that out. Then the fuel galley up here has the same, first we're going to take the fuel galley out very careful not to mark it up. 
take the plastic ring out and rubber o-ring inspect the plunger clean everything up a little bit set it off to the side for reassembly we repeat that process on the other two you won't use all of the washers that come in the kit or all the seals that come in the kit uh, this pump uses the three round washers rather than the three with little uh, dents on the side that you can see up there in the top left corner and as I'm taking little pieces out I'm trying to show you the, on the camera valve cage here in my left hand I'm picking out with a screwdriver teeny tiny little seals want to be careful to get those out and put the new ones in once all the heads are off and the three screws on the face come out the rest of the way and the cam comes out now the, the, the inner cam is going to come out as well. Being careful with all the little pieces. All right, with the little e-spring tool I made, that e-spring comes right out. I'm going to leave it on the tool so that I don't lose it. You can see it sitting there just uh, at the end of the scissors. New seals on the cam. And insert everything back to where we found it. Put the three screws in kind of snug. Not torque them down yet at this point. I'm going to start to reassemble the heads. The rubber washer and then a plastic seal in the holes. And the fuel galley goes back in one hole. Make sure that fuel galley has a rubber seal and a plastic washer on both sides of it. Uh, you don't put them on the fuel galley, you put the seals and washers in the holes that the fuel galley recesses into. And then we hold the tiny little metal washers inside the fuel cage, inside the valve cage there. So we're going to make sure that gets replaced and clean. Then we start putting the valve heads back in, being very careful to get all the parts in there that came out with the uh, with the plunge valve and the spring. Push down a little bit to get everything seated, and then tighten these bolts a little bit. The uh, four T40 bolts, three heads back on the pump. We can place retaining clip back in there and all of its associated parts. And torque the four T40 bolts down to 25 Newton meters on all three heads. So that's 12 bolts. That's 12 bolts we're torquing down to 25 Newton meters. If you're not already subscribed to Florida Van Man on YouTube, please take a minute. Set up an account if you need to. It's free on YouTube. And we certainly do appreciate uh, having somebody to talk to and some, know that somebody's listening. Drop us a note on... Oh, good grief. There's the high-pressure pump that we rebuilt and reinstalled. We'll be getting a new line for that soon, but... Uh... I uh, also replaced some of those white lines that uh, somebody had tried to replace before and couldn't get it disconnected all the way back here at the back of the fuel rail, so they left the one line in. And then we tried a little harder, we got that line out, so we went ahead and put the new one in. While it's here, we're checking to make sure there's no early signs of black death. We've got no leaks at the fuel rail or at the fuel injectors. Everything's looking good, looking dry, clean. This van has a brush guard on it, and, which makes the bumper and grill very hard to get at. The grill had been painted black before, and bugs got at it and ate some of that black paint off. Left some chrome spots sticking out, so we gave it a quick brush with a 3M scruffy pad. Same with the bumper. The bugs had been eating at it, so uh, just gave it a quick brush with a 3M scruffy pad. And, quick coat of black paint before we put it all back together and then trap it in there with that brush guard.